what is then the main driver behind these type of ways of thinking about people and papers? That's conspiracy thinking, that denialism. Mm. Well, the common element of all the thought is that the outcome is predetermined. And we call that motivated cognition. And it means that whatever happens, the outcome has to be that global warming can't be true. And conspiratorial thinking is one element of motivated cognition. It is one way by which you can convince yourself that you don't have to worry about global warming. Because if you can relabel the scientific consensus, you know, the fact that 97% of climate scientists agree on this, if you can relabel that as a conspiracy, well, then you no longer have to sort of face the inescapable consequence of having to deal with the problem. So, motivated cognition, having to come up with a way to dismiss the problem, is what causes people to engage in, in conspiratorial thought. And that's just one aspect of it. There, there are other forms of motivated cognition that are equally relevant to, and in fact are far stronger predictors of the rejection of science. And in the case of climate change, the, the strongest predictor is people's personal ideology, quote unquote, or worldview. And I can ask people, and I've done this repeatedly, I can ask people four questions about their attitudes towards the free market. And that tells me with two-thirds confidence what their attitudes towards climate science are going to be. Somebody who says the free market is the only way to allocate goods in society and to make everybody happy, somebody who strongly agrees with that, chances are two in three that they're going to reject the findings from climate science. Why? Well, because the implications of climate change are that you have to somehow change our current economic activities. And for some people that's terribly painful and too painful to accept. And so they will find a way to deny that we have a problem.